so the rest of their glasses crosses and comes down and it makes this little curve up and then stops at the halfway point so it makes this curve up This part comes around and where does it end almost the halfway point here okay let's go ahead and get that dark in there everything else can be built off of our darkest values it looks like this little corner here is light. looking inside the uh, glasses themselves and it's darker in this corner and then it's definitely lighter up here so this is the brightest part so we can go ahead and make this a little bit darker and then as we am shading barely shading there's this like triangle kind of area here it's a little bit darker and the rest of it is very light very light up here so we'll just um, use a little bit of the q-tip the lightest and then come down to where it's darker And right up here, it's very bright, very bright right near this part of the eye. And then this shape in here is quite dark. This is, I would say that is probably, that's lighter than my 10%. So I would say right in here and right in here is about as bright as we can get. So that's the white of the paper. So I'm not going to go over that part um, with my Q-tip. I'm just going to blend into it so that there's a nice transition between the lightest, that lightest, brightest part and uh, And down here I see just here and here these really interesting lines that I didn't notice and I, I colored over so I'm going to see if I can do some deductive uh, work here I'm going to just erase as much as I can right here and then right in here to get my those dark um, lines in there right here like you see here and then up here too and that's pretty neat it's 
it's so neat that you don't have to see that texture all the way around in order to understand that that's the shape of the glasses and that it does continue around. It's just where the light hits the little ribs that it does that. Okay, let's come on over here. We come down about uh, a quarter of the way and it's going, the bottom of the glasses is going to make this shape right in here like that and then the top of the glasses is coming up and over that's that nose piece curve curve down and then up and this is going to come up and over and it comes down about halfway across it's important to get um, these shapes to cross the grid in the appropriate place at the right angle because when we're when we come down here and work on uh, 5d we want we want that to be in the right place for us and I'm going to keep in mind where these little ridges were I'm gonna block it out I'm gonna say okay I know my ridges are in there and I know that there's more ridges in here and I'm just going to go ahead and do the ridges first. And in here. And now I know that I can go ahead and color in all of these. either side of the ridges with a nice dark value. go over that so that they're not quite quite so separated but these are more narrow okay okay and I can see this is pretty bright in here and kind of up here. There's a little bit down here. I think I'm just going to do this with my, um, with the graphite that's on my Q-tip so that I don't overdo it. And try to give a little bit. It doesn't take a lot. You can see down here there's a little bit of gray. So what's amazing about, um, about this is that you're not really coloring in skin color. His skin color is all the same color, but look, where when we work with values, we look at the light values and the medium values and the dark values. His skin color is exactly the same here and here and here, but the values are different. So as much as you can, as an artist, look for values, you will find that you make a much more convincing uh, drawing. Okay. All right, so this is coming up, and it crosses here, and it crosses here. down. There's more of these um, little uh, reflections up here. So I'm going to put 
put those in before I start shading. see this kind of crescent shape um, where it relates to the grid and where it, re where it relates it's almost like a moon shape it's going to be darker and it's pretty dark in there and there's a little bit of darkness up here and then this in here definitely has some value to it. Moving over, still on the C row, and I can see where the glasses come down here. Over, and then they come up. Out and this is almost down to halfway. We have some more of these reflections, a bit strong black and some thin. There's some a dark kind of shape here. I don't know why all of my dark shapes look like moons. It looks like a moon again. And it looks like I maybe missed some of it up in the B column or row. So I might add that. And then there's this dark shape here, just down from the corner. And it's really dark in there, so I'm gonna try to match it. It has a very soft edge. It just feathers out from a value of maybe maybe a hundred or ninety to a value that is thirty out here. So it very quickly changes to something that's very light. You want to be careful with your blending that you don't just blend out all of the highlights. You want to keep those highlights. Okay, coming over to my last C box. Oh, this is, there's a lot going on here. Whew. Okay, let's start with the outermost shape. Um, I can see where it starts and I, it ends about halfway across. And this shape in here um, starts here and then comes down about almost almost just to the left and up from the middle. Okay, 
going to be very dark in there, very dark to the edge of the ear. And then it's going to very quickly go from dark to not dark at all. Okay. And then this is pretty complicated. Um, it's down off of this spot here and then kind of bends and goes something like that. This little piece comes out and I can see how the highlights change and then there's this kind of stubby triangle does this floats there and see these kind of run together and then this shape up here um, does something like this Blend, soften, blur where it makes sense to. There's darker value under here and up here. Kind of separate those things. And this comes down like that. And then this becomes tricky. Hair is tricky, tricky, tricky. Um, so one thing that you can do is kind of start with a little bit of value from your Q-tip and then you can add the shapes. Now, what I'm seeing is actually um, shapes that are between white hairs. It's not uncommon for someone's eyebrows and their beard to be different kinds of gray. So I'm not seeing lines like I saw in his eyebrow. I saw lines which were dark hairs. I don't see that here. I actually see it's mostly um, white hair and so I can do some deductive work and I can find the values of these shapes that are in there that are between the hairs. Okay. We are on the D line, so we can you go ahead and fold this down, it'll be a little bit easier to see a little bit less of the picture. And we're going to put our colored paper so that it covers everything except for D1. D1. Okay, we're going to start by finding our shape. which we know where it starts. Same as the ear in the C block, and we know that it ends about a third of the way over from the bottom corner. And it comes up with a little, uh, little shape like that, and then back out. And it's all black, except that there's this little white. Maybe that's a hair or a whisker and then maybe another little one. So instead of doing deductive work where I erase out, I'm going to see if I can plan. Oops, maybe I didn't plan very well. Plan for that white hair there and then the white hair here. And I really have to 
leave the white margin for those two hairs. It looks like there's maybe even another one in here. Once we have those shapes planned out, then we can go ahead and shade in nice and dark. Looks like it's about 100% in terms of shading. It's just about as dark as we can get. Now, these lines, uh, the white that I left is significantly thicker than what I see here, so I can come back and get a little bit more out of there so that it's just wispy. And it looks like this one's white, but it looks like these two are not really white, so I can just take my Q-tip with a little bit of graphite on it and go over those two that are there. Okay, moving on to the next square right here. Make sure that my paper is where it needs to be. And here's my square. It is really hard because I have white lines that are going rather black lines that are going through um, black shapes. My grid is overlapping um, my uh, picture in ways that make it kind of tough to see, but I can see that the black glasses do come down and they cross right where they left off in C. They cross over about a third of the way down, something like that, and the whole thickness of the glasses is there, the whole corner, that shape goes all the way up to the corner. And then there's this, these uh, interesting and kind of strange um, shapes. There's a kind of a dark line that comes down here, and another dark line that comes up here, and then kind of does this here. And this is maybe more of a shape then it is a line and it kind of comes down like that and there's this other I'm just looking for these dark shapes and dark lines and trying to mimic them as much as I can and then this whole side is dark until it gets about um, about two-thirds of the way over. So it's really dark. So doing multiple layers. And then when it gets to here, it starts to lighten. It still is probably like an 80%, 90, 80, 90% even all the way over here, so it's definitely not um, not light, but it's lighter than the far left edge. And this might not be light enough. So I'm going to go ahead and shade all the way over. Seems like it's a little bit darker up under here. And then I might just go ahead and blend it and see if that makes it appropriately darker. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Ooh, maybe I want to make it a little darker. It's pretty dark until it gets to here. Yeah, I think that's closer. Moving over one more. And I 
can see these glasses come down and curve around and it looks like right at the halfway point the bottom of the glasses and then looks like it's about that thick and so I'm going to curve this around and curve this around but really slow those glasses um, are a little less forgiving than say wrinkles because wrinkles change a little bit Ooh, look at this there's a little highlight here so I can plan for that highlight just by leading in and you have a really dark dark like the black glasses against a really light light like that highlight it just does something called singing it has a way of singing it's great okay so this is all blurry shapes in the background so i'm going to start over on this side here where it's pretty dark all the way up and then it has this kind of um, dark i'm just giving myself some little dots and this dark shape that comes down it's probably 80 percent something like that and have this pretty dark line here and a little bit of value up in this corner and then the rest of it is very light I'd say it's like 20% so I might just leave it and see if I can keep it light and be I'm going to try to keep those lights as light as possible because it does some interesting things. Oopsie, that got dark fast. Let's try that again, maybe with a Q-tip that doesn't have graphite on it. And then there's this little area in here that's a little bit of light is poking through. And then this little area here is uh, kind of a middle value, maybe 60%, and maybe a little bit less as it comes up, up here, and You really have to watch out for what um, are soft edges and what are hard edges. So where the glasses are, and these are really crisp defined edges, um, but where the skin is and light kind of plays around on the skin, um, then that those are soft edges. So when you're blending, you want to keep that in mind so that you um, only blend soft into soft and you don't uh, lose the shape of your glasses by blending it out and making it blurry because the, the glasses are definitely not blurry. Okay, we'll move over. Oh, this is so interesting. Look at that. Okay, so there's this shape here. It kind of uh, ends in the bottom right corner and then it bows out and it blends in right with those glasses. And this is very light um, to a medium and to a very dark. And the glasses do come up with a hard edge. I can see where it starts and stops. And then I can see that this one follows as well. And it looks like it does get a little wider as it gets to the nose piece. 
and there might be just a little highlight in there so that might be nice to try to keep and the rest of it is pretty dark Okay, and then there's this, ooh, there's this interesting kind of blob right here, which is um, kind of a lighted area, and then it's pretty dark, maybe 80-90%, uh, although you can still see just the edge of the glasses, and then same thing down here, um, it looks like I don't know exactly what's going on. There's a little bit of um, light that's bouncing around in there. So I wanna keep that. Keep the beautiful lights. The more that you can look really carefully, really closely, then the happier you'll be at the end of this project. This is maybe a 20%. So we can just put just a little bit there, blend this in. This area is probably more like 60% right in here. bow that out just a little bit more it looks like it so I'm just using my um, eraser and kind of tapping and doing these little tiny drags um, in order to kind of bow this out a little bit more and this probably isn't quite as big as I have it so that looks pretty good Moving on, okay, so the glasses come down and they curve around and it looks like it's maybe, I don't know, just north of 50%, so something like that. to get the shape right before I start. This is interesting. It kind of comes down and then it comes back up. I don't know if that's a shadow or what exactly that is. We don't need to know what it is. We just need to draw what we see. The more that you can forget what it is that you're trying to draw and just draw the shapes and values that you see and the relationships that those things have together, the more accurate you end up being. It's kind of a funny thing to quiet the mind. little shape right there. This is almost all 10%, but um, there's a little bit of value in here right down at the bottom. And a little bit comes up in here. And then there's a little down here too. Okay.
Okay. Moving on. All right. So the glasses continue and I come across on the six D square and then they come up and this looks like it's just uh, below half and just above half and it looks like it does this with gentle curve and this one does the same. Okay, let's go ahead and get that in. There's a highlight here, so I can preserve a little bit of white right in there, allowing the glasses to be fully formed, but with just a highlight there. And, oh, this is neat. This is a neat shape. Okay, so this is going to come um, just down like this. And then this is very blurry. It's very dark to very light very quickly. So I might try to get my shape in there. Um, it seems like it does something like like this and does something. I'm trying to get it really light with you know, something like that. And this is very dark and this is a hard edge right here. And then this in here is a blurry edge. So I'm gonna get my darks in place first and then I'm lightening my uh, shading hand so that it is barely touching so that it gets a lot lighter very quickly. A little bit of shading goes up in here. And then this shading that kind of comes down this is darker over here. It's almost black over here. And then to light, 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 light. And let's see if we blend this a little bit what happens. You can kind of blend it into the shapes in the square above or to the left of it since you've already drawn those. Okay. And just really trying to preserve those whites that are almost the lightness of the paper. That's probably 10%. Uh, right here, so we want to keep that nice and bright. And let's see, this is down here. Okay, we move on over, and let's see what this one looks like. Ooh, we get to close the glasses. It's so rewarding when you come to the end of a shape like this. <laughs> And we get to close the glasses. Um, I feel like this is maybe a little bit smaller up here, so maybe go ahead and fix that. And this is here, it kind of thickens as it comes to the outside. And then as it curves up, And there's a little tiny highlight in there. So maybe we can preserve that. Okay. And then the 
there's this continuation of this dark um, value underneath the glasses. Very dark right here too. And, and the rest of it is pretty light. There are these, it looks like wrinkles. Um, there is a, a thick line that comes down and starts to curve down and is very light then. Another one here. Another one that's kind of off of the center of those glasses. Um, and then if we, uh, they're a little bit dark right now, but if we blend, trying to not blend the glasses so that they disappear, just allowing this to soften a little bit. And same thing in here. I feel like maybe I forgot that part of the, that was in the glasses, but it looks like it's pretty much all a very light 20%. In there so I think that's probably okay okay moving on we have this ear coming down and this line that kind of comes like this comes around and ends just off of this corner so like that and then it looks like, oof, this is tricky stuff. Um, if I squint my eyes, I see this shape in here. A shape that's wider and then tends to come up. And that seems to be one thing. It's a little bit darker here. Coming in. And and this in here is a little bit darker here and then down and then this is kind of in the middle and kind of crosses over like this so if we soften those and take a look you might want to I'm going to use an eraser that's a little bit thinner and see if I can do some deductive. It's a little bit tricky because my eraser is so much bigger than really what my little hairs are and I think that's what I have is these little hairs. So and then I really would rather have really want to look at value because like these hairs are lighter than his skin so it doesn't make sense to actually like draw with my dark pencil the hairs um, that doesn't make as much sense because they're they're definitely lighter um, let's see maybe just a little bit down here So I think that gets us where we need to be. All right.